Olá, pessoal, bem-vindos. Estamos aqui na Voito para o primeiro episódio da websérie O Mundo Empreendedor, Expedição Israel. Estaremos aqui, aqui mesmo, toda quinta, uma e meia, com novos episódios, sempre com um convidado especial, um convidado de peso. Vamos falar sobre inovação, tecnologia e empreendedorismo aqui em Israel, um dos maiores polos de tecnologia do mundo. Meu nome é Daniel Scaba, sou cofundador e CEO da IBI Tech, uma empresa que surgiu exatamente para aproximar esse ecossistema de inovação de Israel do público brasileiro. Eu estou aqui há quase 30 anos respirando inovação e tecnologia desde o primeiro dia. Eu estudei engenharia de computação no Ternion, berço de quatro prêmios Nobel, inúmeras invenções e o maior formador de liderança da high-tech aqui de Israel. Eu fiz parte do de uma equipe de desenvolvimento de sistemas de defesa dos navios da Marinha de Israel e também trabalhei na Intel por muitos anos, onde eu fui diretor de pesquisa e desenvolvimento na área de microprocessadores. E agora estou aqui com vocês para a gente mergulhar junto nesse mundo de inovação e empreendedorismo. Bem, vamos passar para o nosso convidado especial, mas antes dele entrar, vou chamar nossa querida Bárbara, que vai dar uns recadinhos aqui para a gente. Olá, Bárbara, tudo bem? Bárbara, você está no mudo. Opa, esse é um clássico, né? <risos> Agora já corrigi esse problema. Boa tarde para todo mundo, vim aqui passar para vocês alguns recadinhos antes da gente chamar aqui o nosso convidado de peso. Bom, para você que está querendo conhecer um pouquinho mais sobre esse assunto, se aprofundar mais, a gente deixou para vocês dois artigos bem interessantes. Um deles fala sobre o que é o Lean Healthcare e como implementá-lo para melhorar a área da saúde. Então, tem a ver com essa área que a gente vai conversar um pouquinho aqui sobre hoje. E também teleconsultas e outras inovações na saúde fundamentais durante a pandemia. Se você quiser obter mais conhecimentos, a Voit está aí para você. E claro... Se você quiser também saber sobre outras áreas, sobre empreendedorismo, sobre inovação, sobre tecnologia, basta seguir a gente nas redes sociais. Então, digita aí, arroba Grupo Voito, que você encontra a gente nas principais redes. E também seguir a gente aqui no nosso YouTube. Então, se inscreva no nosso canal, já deixa o like aqui no vídeo se você está gostando desse tema e está esperando ansiosamente por esse conteúdo. E aí, né, gente, falar de uma dinâmica muito bacana que acontece aqui na Voito também, que é o Insight Premiado. E aí, basta você tirar um printzinho aqui da nossa tela e postar no seu Instagram Stories, falando lá algum insight bem legal que você ouviu aqui no nosso encontro e marcando o arroba Grupo Voito. Você postando isso no seu Stories, você vai estar participando do nosso Insight Premiado e vai estar concorrendo a um kit Voito ou a um livro de Excel. E no kitzinho, gente, vem essa canequinha maravilhosa. Olha aqui para vocês, ó. Bem bonitinha, viu, gente? A execução transforma o sonho em realidade. Então, se você quer ganhar um kitzinho desses, basta participar com a gente aqui do Insight Premiado. Além disso, também é válido dizer que a Void tem uma formação completíssima para você que está procurando empreender. Então, a gente tem um conteúdo falando sobre formação empreendedora. E eram esses os nossos recadinhos, agora eu vou deixar vocês com o Daniel. Muitíssimo obrigado, Bárbara. Bem, agora vamos passar para o nosso convidado. Now, I would like to invite Professor Nadav Davidovich. Professor Davidovich is epidemiologist and public health doctor, director of the School of Public Health at Ben Gurion University here in Israel, and... For this situation, he is member of Israel National Experts Committee on COVID-19. Nadav, thanks for being here with us today. Hi, thank you for having me. Nadav, Brazil is going today through the most difficult moment since the beginning of this crisis and giving the first steps in, the, in its own vaccination program. Israel is perceived all over the world as great reference in in this vaccination against COVID-19. What contributed, in your opinion, to the success and how important was the country's innovation environment in this process? So indeed, uh, all over the world, uh, people are calling us uh, to ask about uh, really the amazing uh, success of the vaccination campaign. And of course, there is no one reason for it. 
you need to understand the different aspects of vaccination. So first of all, uh, Israel uh, had uh, the option to have enough uh, vaccines, and this is related to with the good relationship uh, between uh, Israel and different pharmaceutical companies. We have a very strong tradition of uh, research and collaboration uh, with uh, Pfizer, with Moderna, and other companies. I'm uh, very proud to say that uh, the medical uh, officer of uh, Moderna, uh, Professor Tal Zaks, is a graduate of uh, Ben Gurion University uh, School of Medicine. Nice. Uh, of course, we have uh, uh, representatives in Israel, like uh, Pfizer uh, uh, Israel. The Minister of Health from the beginning was in touch uh, with the companies to be sure that uh, when there be available vaccines, we're going to, to have them. And of course, also the personal involvement of the Prime Minister is always uh, important. But of course, it's a, a whole a group of people within the Minister of Health, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, and the political uh, aspect. But I think that uh, no less important is the understanding of uh, the uh, companies, especially Pfizer, that Israel is a very unique place because we have a national health insurance law with public uh, health care, with uh, four health uh, funds that are non-profit, they are spread all over the country, and they have an electronic medical record that can give them the opportunity to manage the campaign in a very efficient uh, manner. Um, we have in Israel a very strong tradition of uh, vaccinations, including in drop of milk station, as they're called. And uh, even though there are people that are against vaccinations, comparing to other countries, it's uh, rather marginal. But we started a campaign against fake news very early, both a uh, top down from the Minister of Health, but also bottom up with different communities, engagement of the municipalities, the health funds, and Israel developing now a, what is called the green standard uh, that includes people that are vaccinated, that they can have uh, their certificate on the smartphone. And uh, we started to open uh, the economy with the option to present it when you're entering a cultural event, sport event, and this is giving uh, an incentive to vaccinate. Now, we need to remember that vaccinations are not enough. Israel is also promoting uh, rapid uh, testing uh, and uh, other options, including, of course, contact tracing. All of this is very, very embedded in our tradition of uh, a strong public health system with uh, technologies and the tradition of uh, innovation. We are a country of early adapters. So this is probably why Israel was chosen by Pfizer to serve as a model country. We are not guinea pigs. The vaccination campaign started after the vaccine was approved by the FDA and the European authorities. And also here in Israel, I'm sitting on several of these uh, committees and uh, we are very proud to be the first country that uh, gets so many people being vaccinated. So all together, it created an ecosystem of innovation and the early adoption of uh, such an amazing uh, messenger RNA uh, technology that is going to revolutionize uh, the medical uh, world, not just with COVID-19, but with other um, infectious diseases, including viral diseases, but also with cancer. Incredible. You mentioned the uh, cooperation between the Israeli ecosystem with Moderna and Pfizer, but also Israel has its own vaccination developments. If I mentioned the biological research in Estiona, and we have also MIG vaccine uh, in Kiryat Shmona. So one thing I would like to get from you, what is the status of these Israeli developments? And also how important it is to a country to have its own vaccines? So we have indeed in Israel a very long tradition of uh, vaccine uh, development. Um, I want to differentiate between developing vaccines and producing vaccines. This is something different. And here, uh, probably like uh, Moderna did, and also uh, the collaboration uh, with Pfizer and the German company, uh, you need to pair, you know, the option for producing vaccine with uh, a 
laboratory developing vaccine and then producing them on a larger scale. So in Israel, we have now uh, several uh, initiatives. The most famous one is uh, by Nestiona Biological uh, Research Center. Uh, they are uh, now almost entering phase three. Uh, the technology is different than uh, messenger RNA. Uh, it's actually using a vehicle, a, a, another a non-pathogenic uh, virus, and then you're introducing there by um, molecular biology uh, the necessary uh, genetic material so the virus can enter into the cells and like uh, with other vaccines, giving you the spike protein, this is the most important one, so antibodies can be uh, produced. Uh, although Israel is now uh, very advanced in the vaccination campaign, I still think it's very important that Israel will keep its uh, option for producing vaccines. The vaccine that Israel is producing in Estiona, in terms of the logistics, is much easier because it can be uh, refrigerated only in a two to eight degrees, like in a regular refrigerator. And when we are moving far uh, farther with uh, other countries, that maybe don't have uh, the logistics of uh, having, uh, you know, deep uh, freezing like uh, with uh, Pfizer, that it was uh, until recently only minus 70 degrees. Now we know that it can be also in minus 15, minus uh, 25, that it's uh, easier, but still, you it's know, countries uh, like in Africa or... Uh, Brazil, you don't need country. to go that far. Yes, so we'll need other vaccines, and this is important to produce uh, other options in order not to have, uh, you know, everything just in uh, uh, something that maybe would be more difficult for other countries uh, to do. So I'm very happy that Israel is moving ahead also with this uh, uh, option. Fantastic. Uh, you mentioned before the, that vaccination is one element of the full uh, actions that the government needs to do and the country needs to do for this, uh, this crisis. Can you Tell us a little bit of some of the innovation, innovative practice that you can see in Israel that uh, helped combat this crisis. Yes, of course. Um, I can divide them uh, into different aspects. One is, uh, for example, early detection. Uh, so, for example, at Ben Gurion University, together with the Technion and the uh, Kandu, Kandu is a company dealing with sewage uh, uh, surveillance. Uh, we are already uh, very engaged with uh, several uh, cities around the country and also uh, outside of uh, Israel doing a sewage uh, surveillance of uh, uh, COVID-19, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. Uh, this is quite similar to what we are doing uh, uh, in normal times uh, for polio. Uh, we need to remember that uh, there is an expression of the virus uh, in our feces uh, and this is how you can get into the sewage uh, and uh, have an early uh, detection. Other wow. uh, detection, other options are uh, breathing tests that can be, you know, inside. Uh, this is also promoted in uh, Ben Gurion University and in other uh, university. There are other uh, uh, developments regarding protection, such as the uh, special masks that are, uh, you know, for long-term uh, use and are antiviral. Uh, and of course, there are the other developments such as for treatment, uh, Hadassah Medical Organization and other uh, institutions are dealing with uh, clinical uh, trials uh, that are based on uh, uh, serum or antibodies or uh, other uh, options. Uh, so all over the spectrum from early detection, prevention, uh, vaccination and clinical treatment, Israel is very, very engaged. Ben Gurion University uh, we had a special uh, task force uh, that was initiated by our president of the university, Professor Daniel Shemovit, uh, but also on the country level, the Ministry of uh, uh, Science and also the Ministry of Health. Uh, they both uh, issued uh, a call for initiatives. Um, by the way, it uh, can be also about community resilience and uh, not just about uh, the biological aspects. We need to remember that uh, many issues related to mental health, issues related to the welfare, especially of the elderly. So there are interesting technologies, how to keep the elderly people not being alone 
uh, because the mental health aspects are also very, very important. That's amazing. And how, how you, you just mentioned, you know, several uh, initiatives in different uh, aspects and from university and government initiatives and the private university. What drives these, uh, these people, these uh, scientists, these entrepreneurs to bring this solution for, for a crisis in such a short notice? You know, this is amazing. I think there'll be lots of uh, studies about, uh, you know, the scientific uh, world right now. Uh, you know, starting from the vaccines that we discussed uh, before, uh, I never remember, and I'm in the, you know, so-called business of vaccines for more than two decades, you know, how fast uh, was this uh, development? And I think what is really important is uh, to create an ecosystem of collaboration. So how we can bring the different stakeholders, you know, people from basic science, people from the clinical aspect, epidemiological, public health, but also people from, you know, economy, um, management, to work it together and to think about problems and the solution, how you can create, you know, a space where they can uh, work together. And I think what was really great uh, in uh, this case in Israel, also in other countries, of course, but within Israel is, you know, those initiatives that are bringing together people from academia, uh, from the industry, uh, from the communities, uh, from hospitals, from uh, uh, other parts of the medical system to think together in an interdisciplinary way to solve problems. I think the problem solving approach is probably much better uh, because otherwise you are sitting in a different silos and people don't connect and then it takes much, much more time. So you need to accelerate these developments and to think outside the box and create these kind of spaces where people from different institutions and different disciplines can work together on a certain uh, problem. I think this is uh, the unique uh, key and this is what uh, Israel is actually excellent in. Great, thanks a lot. Now, we can see lately the dissemination of several new strains all over the world. We have its own Brazilian mutation also that is being, you know, making us uh, even more scary. So what are the lessons learned from Israel ecosystem and for, you know, how we are protecting ourselves for these different mutations? So again, for those who are familiar with uh, uh, disease ecology and virology, this is not surprising at all. I mean, uh, viruses are always mutating. When you have a, a, a certain cluster of mutations that can create a variant, you need to take a look using genetic typing to see if this new variant is maybe creating uh, one of the proteins, especially the spike protein, because the spike protein is related to infectivity and also this is the protein that antibodies are created against. So when you have a variant of concern, then you need to see uh, what is the influence in terms of the infectivity, the clinical data, and of course now with uh, uh, vaccines. So this is something that we started to follow from the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, I'm very happy that finally, and you know, it took us uh, maybe a bit too long, uh, not just in Israel, but in other countries, to understand the importance of molecular epidemiology, how to link it, to do this linkage between the genetic data and the epidemiological investigations, for example, to understand the role of the uh, super spreaders. Uh, this you must do with uh, genetic typing. And now to continue the follow-up to understand uh, the role of uh, these new variants in terms of uh, the spread of the pandemic and also the role of uh, vaccines. I want to maybe uh, calm a bit uh, I think that we need to be alert, but this was not a surprise. And we are going to see more and more mutations. Currently, vaccines are working against them. Maybe in some cases, a little bit less, but you know, 95% is like a dream. So even if you're going to 85%, this is still uh, quite, uh, this is good enough. Uh, in the future, there is a possibility like with influenza, that uh, there'll be a variant that will develop and maybe we need to adapt uh, the vaccines. The good news 
that the messenger RNA vaccines are much easier to adapt and uh, maybe it will be uh, like with influenza that uh, we're going to have a seasonal vaccination and we need maybe to get a, a booster every year or so. We're still following, it's not clear, uh, but I think that uh, uh, we don't need to panic. Uh, things are, you know, under surveillance and uh, we need to be on alert and see how uh, we continue and especially maybe adapting uh, uh, the messenger RNA vaccines for the new variants. Now we have uh, some questions that arrive from our, our audience, uh, our Voito students uh, and Adav. And uh, the first of them is related to our children because there's a, a huge challenge regarding the children vaccination in Israel and all over the world. So uh, the question is how we can deal with this challenge and how can new technologies improve in this process? So uh, we are all waiting now to hear uh, from uh, Pfizer and AstraZeneca and Moderna. Uh, they have uh, Pfizer, for example, are almost done with the phase three uh, trial with uh, children. Uh, we cannot get into herd immunity until uh, we're going to have vaccines uh, for children. But meanwhile, I think uh, it's very important to remember that we have other options. Uh, in Israel, uh, we continue now to open the educational system because, you know, public health cannot be just about Corona. Public health is also about uh, the well-being, the educational, emotional development of uh, children. So the question is not, uh, you know, should we open, but the question is more how we should open. And here we can combine, of course, vaccination of teachers, but also doing uh, uh, testing uh, in schools and kindergartens. Tests uh, can be either by pooling. Pooling is an idea where you get, for example, 20 children into one uh, place where you are checking and if it's positive, you're returning to the suspected children and getting another uh, test. Or you can do rapid uh, tests. So the combination of uh, vaccines and testing and, of course, very, very traditional techniques like uh, teaching outside, teaching in small classes. Um, I think that, uh, like in many other um, instances, we are now rethinking the education system uh, about uh, using of uh, online teaching, hybrid systems, and maybe, you know, this can uh, give us uh, new ideas for uh, several reforms that I think were needed a long time ago. Thanks a lot. Another question that arrived is related to how we could leverage the Israel experience uh, to Brazil. How we could how we could generate a cooperation be between these two countries and and bring all this experience and and in some way, in some way a success of Israel in this combat to this uh, pandemic to Brazil. So I think first of all, uh, what is most important is to have a, a true dialogue. Uh, to bring uh, around the table uh, different uh, people, different experts from different fields and to see, you know, how we can collaborate. I'm sure that uh, Israel can learn a lot from the Brazilian experience and Brazil can learn from the Israeli experience. And uh, wow. finally, uh, when you're sharing information, uh, this is very important. Um, I think uh, that on the other hand, we should remember that uh, things cannot be just copy-paste. I mean, every country has its own uh, tradition, uh, its own uh, system, healthcare system. So we need to be careful because sometimes when you are adapting, even a very successful uh, in, uh, example, like, uh, you know, the vaccination campaign in Israel, it cannot be just copy paste. You need to see, you know, what is relevant, what is not relevant. And I think that, uh, uh, again, uh, breaking the walls between different institutions and disciplines and uh, collaborating, meaning how you can give incentives for such collaborations. This is probably the most important uh, uh, factor. Uh, and uh, I know that the excellent relationship uh, on the political level between Israel and Brazil, uh, also in terms of uh, scientific exchange. So we need to see how this is more sustainable and how we exchange ideas and information, thinking, you know, what is the, 
you know, uh, uh, strongest point in one system and another one and uh, learning from each other. You just mentioned uh, sharing information and learning from the different experience. And we actually saw during this uh, crisis uh, cooperation and collaboration all over the world that we haven't seen before. Do you think that we are entering a new era of uh, sharing and collaboration all over the world? Uh, I think that uh, we use already existing uh, venues uh, and uh, many of them, you know, just think about uh, the fact that uh, Chinese scientists, uh, uh, you know, uh, sent uh, the genetic composition of the virus very early. And this is how, you know, for example, uh, Moderna and Pfizer, you know, took it. Uh, um, so I think we need to give uh, more power to international organization, especially scientific ones, such as the, the World Health Organization. But also, you know, there is a World Federation of Public Health Association. Uh, my very good friend, uh, Professor Walter Ricciardi, is the president now. Uh, he's from Italy. Uh, so these kind of platforms of uh, professional organizations on the international level, that's something we need to uh, strengthen uh, and including uh, exchange. Um, now, are we on a new era? I think in many ways it was just an acceleration of existing uh, trends that were there before. On the other hand, I think we need to be also very careful because sometimes, you know, people are talking about COVIDization of science. We need to be also careful because sometimes people are so in a hurry to publish and there's lots of preprint and the whole system of uh, peer review is now suffering. So I think that we need also to be careful to remember that not everything is uh, amazing in uh, this uh, period of, uh, uh, of uh, COVID uh, and there are some uh, things that uh, maybe we need to take one step uh, back and rethink. Uh, I just mentioned the peer review process, uh, but uh, other things. And, uh, you know, we are talking now on an online platform that, of course, uh, revolutionized uh, what we are doing. Again, it was before, but uh, for a variety of reasons, we had lots of barriers. But probably it would be good also to have uh, the old fashioned personal interactions uh, that many of us are missing. So probably doing the right mix, you know, the hybrid way and how exactly to do it, that's something that we still need to learn. Nadav, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, your experience for our audience. As I mentioned to you before uh, before I started recording, uh, I see you many times in the Israel news and every time that I see you, it makes me calm. You bring your knowledge, your experience, uh, and I hope that you you brought some uh, of this knowledge to the Brazilian audience and bringing hope to them in this very, very, very tough period. Nadav, thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for your kind words. And uh, again, uh, you're right. It, uh, it's a question of solidarity. I think uh, that's uh, what we need to bring uh, right now. And it's in our hands. Thank you so much. Fantastic. E agora, eu gostaria de convidar novamente a nossa Bárbara para mais alguns recados. Olá, pessoal, tudo bem? Ó, já estou aqui com vários insights bem legais sobre essa live. Anotei tudo aqui no meu caderninho. E ó, Opa. tá bem legal, viu, gente? Ó, para começar, é um dos maiores destaques assim, que eu observei em Israel é simplesmente a questão de tudo estar muito conectado. Então, todas as etapas ali, seja vacinação, seja prevenção, seja qualquer coisa que seja ligada ao corona, né? Tudo que está ligado ali a, a essa disseminação é, foi estudado e foi identificado para que todas as etapas fossem muito bem descritas e controladas. Então, não é apenas a vacinação, mas também tudo que está ao redor e que pode também proporcionar de alguma forma que afete né, essa vacinação ao final. E além disso, é claro, a questão de a tecnologia, achei muito legal também que ele comentou sobre todos os âmbitos estarem muito bem conectados, então, seja a comunidade acadêmica, seja a comunidade pública mesmo, as pessoas, seja a comunidade da saúde, todas essas comunidades se juntaram em prol de realmente fazer a diferença. Então, esse trabalho em conjunto, essa questão mais unida, foi o que proporcionou, de fato, também essa agilidade, essa rapidez. 
E também a questão de realização de testes, igual eu comentei, todas as etapas estarem muito bem definidas. Então, não é simplesmente vacinar, é também prestar atenção se a, a população está sendo vacinada, se a população está sendo testada, como que está o controle em cada um dos níveis. E aí, achei muito interessante também ele falando, né, quando a gente perguntou sobre o fato das crianças. E aí, ele comentou que a pergunta não é... É, quando? Será que vamos reabrir a economia? Será que vamos voltar? Não, a pergunta é como vamos fazer para voltar? Então, quais ações a gente pode fazer para garantir que isso realmente seja, de fato, mais seguro para a população? E aí, muito interessante também a questão da tecnologia mesmo, a forma como Israel também tem os seus próprios planos com relação aos desenvolvimentos e também se preocupa com esse âmbito, né? Então, realmente adequar todas essas diversas variáveis em prol de realmente trazer um resultado mais duradouro e que realmente, de fato, vai impactar a população. Então, assim, foi uma live completíssima. Achei muito interessante falar sobre esse tema, Daniel. Maravilha, Bárbara. Obrigadíssimo para você. E, novamente, obrigado pelo Nadav Davidovic, com realmente uma, uma figura muito, muito importante, especial aqui em Israel. E eu queria agradecer mais do que tudo a vocês, pessoal. Obrigadíssimo por ter nos acompanhado nessa live. E na semana que vem, nós vamos ter Sigalit Lidai. Ela lidera as parcerias na Startup Nation Central, uma organização incrível que vocês vão conhecer na semana que vem. Vamos conversar sobre o panorama geral do ecossistema de inovação de Israel. Então, pessoal, até lá e nos encontramos aqui mesmo. Um abração, tenha uma ótima semana.